People take for granted the power that good photography can have on the world. Minamata, released in 2020 and is directed by Andrew Levitas, who has also directed the film Lullaby. And this movie is starring Johnny Depp, Hiroyuki Sanada, Minami, Jun Kunimura, Ryokase, Tadananobu Asano, and Bill Nighy. And the reason why we're talking about Minamata today is because it was a PayPal recommendation and donation from one of my contributors and longtime supporters on this channel, Name the Stars. I told you I was getting to all of your recommendations that you're sending me for this quarter, so I'm knocking them all out here. This is one, I don't even know if you remember recommending this one, but I remember getting this and thinking I have no idea what this is. And, you know, to, to my ignorant brain, I'd never even heard the word Minamata before. Come to find out that it's a city over in Japan, so... Hey, look at this uncultured piece of crap right here. Minamata follows one of the last photographic essays that was crafted by famous photographer W. Eugene Smith. After being a recluse for several years after his time at life, a Japanese translator named Aileen urges Smith to visit Minamata to photograph and document the disease of mercury poisoning that is affecting the majority of the inhabitants of Minamata. While there, Smith deals with his alcoholism and his drive and passion for photography, but he soon develops the drive to complete this photo essay after meeting with several of the inhabitants of Minamata. Now, growing up, I'd always heard about mercury poisoning and just mercury, how it's terrible for you and how it could be possibly found in several household items, but I guess I never realized the actual effect that mercury poisoning can have on someone, but then after watching this movie, I just, my mind is blown. I've just been so ignorant for just my entire life. There's something like this is happening, this is based on real events and real happenings that happened over in Japan, and the fact that I just didn't know that makes me angry at myself, how uncultured and just... How sheltered and kept in I am from all outside world events. Plus, I've never even heard of this guy, W. Eugene Smith. Apparently, he's one of the greatest photographers to ever live. He is one of the reasons why Life Magazine made it so big for so long. And after watching this movie and actually looking up a lot of his work that he has showcased in this movie and just all the work that has been showcased in Life Magazine over you know, past several decades. It's truly stunning and it's truly beautiful. It's horrifically beautiful, but it's just the power of photography, man. It is, it's a powerful thing. It is a beautiful thing. I think the majority of us all around the world takes for granted just how powerful taking a picture of someone or something can be. It's a tangible thing of us taking a picture of one thing and then we can send it to someone on the other side of the world. Seeing that one scene that we're seeing right here, live, right now, is truly remarkable if you step back and think about it. And I love that he always shoots in black and white. I think there's so much emotion that can be evoked through no saturation of color, just pure black and white and shades of gray. I just, I just love his work, just the small amount of work that I've looked up. And of course, this movie builds up to the climax of one of, I guess, one of the most famous photographs ever taken, and that's Tomoko and her mother in the bathtub. And that is one of the most beautiful scenes I've ever seen in a film, and it's one of the most beautiful pictures I have ever seen. I, I'm just ashamed of myself that I've never even heard or seen this before today. It's a brilliantly shot and blocked scene too. When the doors pull back, Tomoko and her mother are already in the bathtub, but we don't see that yet. All we see is Johnny Depp, who does a great job in this film as W. Eugene Smith. He has his little tripod, he's beaten up, he's scarred up because he was taking pictures at different rallies and the security cards beat him up, so he's struggling. But you just see his face just overcome with just pure emotion, whether it's sad, it's happy, it's depressed, it's hopeful. You can see every single emotion that has ever been thought of by the human race encompassed into his performance in this one scene. It is excellent. And they just linger on him, him struggling and dealing with what he is seeing, moving the tripod a little bit so that he can get just the right angle and just the right lining to encompass what he's seeing. And then after, I would say like five, seven minutes of looking at Johnny Depp, suddenly the camera switches and then we see Tomoko with her mother in the bathtub and there's just no sound. You just hear the water in the bathtub. It's a very peaceful scene and like I said, it's just one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen 
in film. And then there's just that little punch of swelling music at the end as the camera zooms in in a close-up on them. Ah, oh, like I said, this is one of the best scenes I've ever seen. And I already kind of mentioned it, Johnny Depp is incredible in this movie. He is unrecognizable, so props to the makeup and prosthetic team. His facial hair, the, the kind of the markings on his chin, the, the wig that they put on him. Oh my god, that's just freaking great. I'm looking at him like, that's... I can kind of see Johnny Depp, but I don't see Johnny Depp here. I see whoever this guy is, W. Eugene Smith. Again, someone who I've never heard of before, but who is a prominent person in just pop culture and the world, I guess. And this character, he's a recluse. He doesn't want to do anything. He likes his little slum of an apartment and reliving in his head the glory days of days that were great and days that were terrible because you can tell there's some PTSD in there. He has scars on his body, I'm sure, from several several war scenes that he photographed over the years. But then this movie turns into a Joseph Campbell hero's journey. He gets the call to adventure, he gets the call to action, and he goes over to Japan. He gets the backing of Life magazine, the editor-in-chief, played by Bill Nighy, which I will say is really weird with him doing an American accent. Like, it came out of no- like, where is the British accent? Every single thing I've seen him do, it's either been something kooky, like in Pirates of the Caribbean, or it's a bit of British accent. Where is that? What are you doing with this American accent? It's okay. It's just really weird coming from your voice. But he gets the backing from him, he goes over to Japan, and he's still a recluse there. He's still fighting against this town, fighting against this society, fighting against, really, this problem. He recognizes that there is a problem, and it should, probably should be covered, but... He just can't find that passion, that drive for artistic creativity and the drive of sharing an important theme with the world. So to see this character slowly get into that and slowly find that for himself, it's very inspiring. It's very hopeful, even though he goes through some pretty pretty dark places in this movie. I also enjoy that they keep him an alcoholic throughout this entire movie. There are so many times where Hollywood gets their hands on a property and they make the main character an alcoholic, or maybe they smoke too much, and then by the end, because they've been so emotionally affected by whatever the situation is, all of a sudden they give up drinking, or they go to AA, or they give up smoking, and they have the nicotine patch on, or whatever. I've seen that happen so many times before, and just gets too happy ending-ish. In here, he has a drinking problem, and he keeps that drinking problem the entire time. And I actually really respect that from the storytelling of this character. You can tell that this experience changed him and made him a different person, but he also still had those demons that he brought with him over to Japan from the States. It's a beautiful little picture. It's a slow picture. There are a lot of scenes in here where there's no dialogue happening. It's really just introspective. You get a lot of philosophical ideas. You see a lot of beautiful cinematography. So if anything, just revel in that through all the sunsets and how the sun is hitting the mountains in the background and the sun hitting the, the lake that they're on, the ocean that they're on. Oh, it's beautiful. I freaking love it. I would say that this is a cinematographer's or a photographer's film. I think everyone would just, you know, sit back if they were photographers and they'd just be like, yeah, this is, this is photography in moving form. This is gorgeous. This is beautiful. I think this film is a nice slice of life look at a real happening that happened in this world decades ago that people like myself didn't even realize and is still going on after you read the little blips that happen right before the final credits that kind of make you a little angry seeing how nothing has really been done about it. But I'm going to give Minamata four out of five Blu-rays. Like it a lot. So guys, if you've seen Minamata, what did you think about it? Or if you've never seen it before and you stumbled across it because of this video, then comment below and let me know what you thought about it. And as always, if you like what you see here, if you like my take on movies, then hit the subscribe button and make sure you hit that bell. See you all the next time I'm releasing my next movie review. So guys, I will see you next time on the channel. But in the meantime, be well, be good to each other, and go watch a movie. Take care, guys.